We're going to be solving word problems, choosing the perimeter, area, or volume. This is Lesson 15D. And we have three previous videos, 15A, B, and C, before this that are linked in the description along with other helpful videos. And depending on the word problem, we may need to find the perimeter, an area, or a volume. We did perimeter in video 15A. It's the measure around the sides of an object, like a fence. It's units of length. We did area in video 15B. It's the measure of square units needed to cover a flat surface. It's measured in square units. We did volume in 15C. It's the measure of space inside a three-dimensional, you know, 3D object. It's measured in cubic units. It's like how many cubes will fit in a box. To find perimeter, we total and find the sum of the sides. We just add up the length of the sides, and that's the perimeter. For area, we multiply length times width for a rectangle or a square, and we would do like 4 times 2, and that would tell us that the area was 8 units. For volume, we would do the length times width times height, and that would tell us how many cubic units are inside of that object. Now be careful to ignore unnecessary information and to answer exactly what it's asking. This problem says, the kitchen is 15 feet long and 12 feet wide. The living room is 25 feet long and 15 feet wide. How many square feet of carpeting will be needed to cover the living room floor? It's talking about the living room floor. It gave us information about the kitchen. So we need to ignore this kitchen information. It's not necessary. Just ignore it. Solve what it's asking. We need the area of the living room floor. So we have 25 feet and 15 feet. We multiply those real quick with our calculator and get 375 square feet. That's what it was asking. That's our answer. Okay, so be careful if they trick you with unnecessary information. All right. Tala made a blanket and wants to put satin ribbon around the edge. How many feet of ribbon will she need? So it gives us this picture with six feet here and four feet here, but these two are missing. Do we need these two? Is this one of those questions that there's not enough information? No, we know that a rectangle has the same measure on these sides and the same measure on these two sides, don't we? So we know that's six feet and we know that's four feet. We just total it up to figure out how many feet of satin ribbon need to go all the way around. We find the perimeter. We can do two times six and two times four and add them together to get 20 feet. So the correct answer is 20 feet. Okay, so this one, number two. All right. A flower box is 12 inches high, 6 inches wide, and 24 inches long. How many cubic feet of soil is needed to fill it? So we need to find the volume, don't we? We need to find out how much will fill that flower box. But look, it gives us inches high, inches wide, and inches long, but it wants cubic feet. We can multiply the 24 times the 6 times the 12, it doesn't matter what order, and we get 1,728 cubic inches. It says it wants cubic feet, though. Well, the easiest way to solve this, because of the way these numbers are, there's a 12 and there's 12 inches and a foot, there's a 24, that would be 2 feet even, wouldn't it? And 6 inches would be half a foot. Those are like pretty even numbers to work with. So if we convert the inches to feet first, we can do two feet times one foot times half foot, right? Two times 0.5, that's for the half, times one, it gives us one cubic foot, all right? Now we could do it this way, where we get 1,728 cubic inches. The problem though is you can't just do 1,728 divided by 12, because that's gonna give us 144. You can't just divide it by 12. You actually need the cube root for this number. We're going to get into that later on when we cover algebra. And there'll be a link in this description for my Algebra 1 video 11.3a, uh, uh, I'm sorry, 11.3c for cube roots. So if you go to the description, you're going to see that link for that Algebra 1 video on cube roots. Okay, so if you really want to know about that, and it'll tell you how to take a big number like this and how to cube it, all right? We have one quart of paint covers 100 square feet. How many gallons are needed to cover a wall that is 75 feet long and 12 feet high? So this could be a wall on the outside of a store, and the store owner, the building owner, wants to paint this wall to make it look nicer. So the 
outside wall of the store is this big, long wall that's 75 feet long, and it's 12 feet high. This is just length times width. We need to find the area. And we multiply these two together, we get 900 square feet. But that's one quart of paint covers 100 square feet, and it's asking for gallons. We know there's four quarts in a gallon. We know the 900 square feet is nine quarts, because there's 100 per quart. So that's nine quarts. Now all we have to do is convert this to gallons. So what we're doing is nine divided by four. How many four quarts that equal a gallon will, can we pull out of this nine quarts? So fractions are little division problems, aren't they? Is this nine divided by four, and we simplify it as two and one fourth gallons, or 2.25, right? That's still two and a fourth, right? A swimming pool measures 20 feet long, 12 feet wide, and 6 feet deep. What's the volume of the pool in cubic feet? So now we have to do length times width times height because we're doing volume. So we do the 20 times the 12 times the 6, and we get 1,440 feet cubed. That's how you would read that with the little 3 exponent. You could also write it as cubic feet, or it could be written as C-U-F-T, couldn't it? Either way, it's telling us that it's cubic feet, all right? So there's three different ways to write it with FT abbreviation with the little three exponent, cubic feet abbreviated like this, or spelled out cubic feet, okay? Now, if this same pool is only filled halfway with water, how many cubic feet of water are in the pool? We solve it the same way that we did up here. We just cut the answer in half. We can multiply it by a half, or we can multiply it by 0.5, couldn't we? We could also do 0.5 on our calculator. And then that'll tell us the answer. As a fraction on paper, we can just write this over a 1 and then multiply straight across. We learned that when we did fractions, didn't we? And we just divide 1,440 by 2 and get 720 feet cubed. See? And it was asking for cubic feet. So we know if the pool is filled only halfway, it's only got 720 feet cubed. It's half of that answer, okay? So you now should be ready to do the skill focus on page 177. Just make sure you really read the problem and answer exactly what it was asking. Don't let it trick you, okay? Our next video is going to be solving word problems by drawing a picture. And amazingly, drawing some silly little picture might turn a light bulb on over your head and make you understand the problem and you'll be able to answer it quicker, okay? And I'll show you. That's lesson 15E. And if you need more help, there's these grade four, five, and six videos that talk about word problems with area, perimeter, or volume. And I'll have that link to that cube root video from Algebra 1 and the previous videos for this particular lesson 15, okay? They'll be linked in the description, so you can just click on them, all right? So we're going to continue on. We're more than halfway through GED math, which means you're a success because you've already completed more than halfway, all right? And I'll see you next video. Keep your chin up. We're going to make it. Bye.